What is it that makes me me? Even though now I'm not much like the child I once was. The simple answer is that I'm an animal with a genetic inheritance from my parents and ancestors, and I've been shaped by the things that have happened to me, and of course by what I've chosen to do. But plenty of people think there's a core self, something unchanging behind this, a, a soul maybe. Back in the 18th century, when most people believed in immortal souls, David Hume, who's my favorite philosopher, tried to find the self lurking behind all his experiences, the thing that made him, him. But he couldn't. Religious philosophers like Bishop Butler, for example, were certain they had direct experience of their own soul. But try as he might, Hume couldn't find it. All he could discover was a succession of fleeting experiences, perceptions, memories and so on. Nothing permanent behind it all. For my part, when I enter most intimately into what I call myself, I always stumble on some particular perception or other of heat or cold, light or shade, love or hatred, pain or pleasure. I never can catch myself at any time without a perception and never can observe anything but the perception. Memory seems to hold my life together. It joins the fleeting impressions, makes sense of it a bit. John Locke, writing in the 17th century, was really worried about what the self was. That's partly because he and most of his contemporaries believed that the self would survive death. But in what sense could somebody be the same person after death? After all, it's not even obvious that we remain the same person as we get older, given that we change so much over time. I suppose it's clear that I'm the same biological human being I was when I was a child. Like all animals, we're born, we develop physically, we get decrepit, and eventually we die. But Locke thought that being the same human being was different from being the same person. So if you do forget everything, you might still be the same animal, but you surely wouldn't be the same person you once were. Because it's the continuity of our memory that links past with present and makes us the same person, not our body. So if you lose your memory, your past is no longer your past. But if your past is no longer a part of you now, are you nevertheless still responsible for the things you did back then? This matters because we still do have to decide whether or not people remain morally responsible for things they did years ago. What if they were concentration camp guards? Is it still right to prosecute people like this for something they can hardly remember? Locke had a simple answer. For him, memory is the key. Memory gives us personal identity. It's memory that makes us what we are, despite all the physical changes. So if you completely forget something you did, then as far as Locke was concerned, you'd no longer be morally responsible for it. God would only punish people for the sins they remembered committing. It's a consequence of Locke's view that you could be the same person in a completely different body. Locke thought about this and he imagined a prince waking up with a cobbler's memories and the cobbler waking up with the prince's memories. If the prince turned out to be a serial killer, then it should be the one with the prince's memories in the cobbler's body that should be punished, at least in God's eyes. Actually, I don't agree with Locke, but if I could transfer all my memories to another brain, in a cloned body perhaps, would I carry on existing? If I could, then that would mean I could survive bodily death. But how would we ever find out? The great surrealist filmmaker Louis Bunuel wrote, you have to begin to lose your memory, if only in bits and pieces, to realize that memory is what makes our lives. Life without memory is no life at all.